A deep, dark lock. What mysterious secrets lurk below? A creature that has until now eluded science. Join the Mysterious Planet team as they go in search of the Loch Ness Monster. Alright, and back up. Is that better? I'm happy? Yeah, I think we've just about got it set. It's perfect. Good. We're ready to go. To date, science has been unable to solve this mystery, but that might all be about to change. Loch Ness. Is its dark depths really home to a mysterious beast called the Loch Ness Monster? Tonight on this one-off television special, we'll know beyond any reasonable doubt. Lee is keen to venture out into the loch to do his initial survey and he has recruited legendary cryptozoologist Graham Cosby, who will help plan the expedition. The conditions are perfect when the team board their research vessel, Nessie Hunter. But then, drama. There is a double booking, and a primary school field trip from Inverness has the boat until next Thursday. So Lee must begin phase two early, interviewing some of the thousands of eyewitnesses. I've lived here all my life, and um, I've travelled the water, uh, boat, plane. I've been 650 feet down the submarine, and honestly, sir, I have never seen anything in Loch Ness. It is not an ideal start to the expedition, but it gets worse. Have you ever seen the, the Loch Ness Monster? No, I've never seen the Loch Ness Monster, but my husband says he's married to it. Had you had those, what kind of experience, how do you think you'd react, had you seen something like that in, 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 in such a body of water? Uh, scared, I would think I'd be very scared. Is there anything else fantastic that you've seen in your life that you'd like to share with us? Perhaps we can get a comparison on how you might react, anything? Mm, not really, are you looking for monster type things, no? Anything at this anything? stage, to be honest. I just oh. came back from India recently. Okay, okay, well, and how did that go? I felt that, I saw a lot of things that I'd never seen in my life before. Or... Yeah, just strange, unusual things that you couldn't explain. Yep, okay. Are they the sort of emotions you might feel if yes. you've seen something in the water? Yes, the yes. Humps oh, and all that. yes. Yeah, okay, now, now that's where we're getting at. Yeah, okay. definitely. I do think there is something about Loch Ness. It's definitely got an atmosphere. You know, it's been a couple of days now I've been away, and, uh, you know, I think we just need to discuss it. Yeah, but you always say... Hey, what, what, what's that underwater dinosaur that you were talking about earlier? That, that submersible dinosaur you're talking about? Oh, the plesiosaur. Plesiosaur, plesiosaur. Listen, that was just since again, we've had problems. Uh, there's a guy, Brian, that we haven't, we haven't uh, who's, discussed who's, him. Who's, who's Brian? He's uh, a furniture upholsterer. What's, what's wrong with that? Well, we don't have any furniture. Well, why not? Sheila, my first wife, got it. What's he doing at the house? Three days out of four, measuring up. I think he's measuring her up. Legendary researcher Adrian Schein. Sorry about that, Adrian. It's... <laughs> the plesiosaur. Now, a lot of people believe the creature could be a plesiosaur. Thoughts on that? Well, yes, there are speculations about it, but looking at the bone structure, it would appear they were actually cold blooded. But also, we've, it's been found recently that plesiosaurs cannot raise their necks swan like. The vertebrae. Okay, sorry, can I just stop that? Happening. One second, Lee. Uh, Jacinta, I've tried her five times now. She's not answering my call. Graham, can we just keep not, not a, I'm getting a little bit. Not a good so You shouldn't be leaving a message in the voicemail anyway. But can we just talk about this later? Sorry. So, Adrian, you're talking about the, the submersible, the dinosaur, the pissy saw, and um, yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that does rather knock the classic image on the head, but it doesn't knock the mystery on the head. In the years since St. Columba's alleged first encounter with the beast, the legend of the Loch Ness Monster by and large was considered a fanciful fable. But once of course this road opened up on the west side of the loch. Oh, 
I don't know if you can use that, Terry. I'm probably going to have to do it again, don't you think? Yeah. For you? Yeah. But was it good for you, was it? Not really. No. You do want me to do it again then? Yeah. You don't? You do? Yeah. <laughs> well, but once, of course, this road opened up on the west side of the lock in the early 30s, sightings increased by an amazing 7,000%. Andy, thanks for leaving the Texas Hold'em poker tournament on touch on yeah, notice. No we really appreciate no your time here. And so this thing, what would you compare it with in the water, other things you've seen? Like a giant snake, just sort of coming out of the water. It's very strange. So you've seen a giant snake in the water? I haven't, no. <laughs> okay, so you don't That's really have a it. comparison. But I'm trying to get it, you can't hardly compare it to giant snake if you haven't actually seen a giant snake. I mean, could yeah. you say maybe something you're used to? Maybe it was like a bus, like a maxi taxi? No, it was more like, it's very curved. So okay, so it's a okay. comparison to like that. Like a snake? You know? Yeah. The giant snake, okay. Pretty okay, much. fantastic. Mysterious Planet are hoping for a cancellation from the primary school field trip who booked their research vessel. Ali Ann, any missions for me? Annual Okay, do you think it would be? The delay is taking its toll on the crew. This was supposed to be a one or two day at most, this expedition. I mean, we talked about this, but yeah. we've had complications, and I, I understand that, but she doesn't understand that. I know. Uh, we still haven't been able to get out of the water yet. So in the meantime, I've just been talking to Graham about his, his relationship. He's, he's obviously having some uh, marital issues going on there. She's got to understand this kind of um, study is it's not an exact science. It never is. We've been here three days now, and not a whole lot's happened. Yeah. For now, Lee is forced to focus on the thousands of eyewitness accounts. I have met local people, unconnected with tourism, uh, who have had encounters with something powerful in the loch. Ash, I might just interrupt. It might be easy if I just come over there, I think. Adrian? Might be a little bit better, yes. Don't know why. I mean, it just, I think it's probably easier if we're kind of a bit more intimate. Otherwise, you know, you might not get everything I, you know. Um, Usually helps, yes. Yeah, so you've talked to a lot of eyewitnesses in the past. Yes, I yes, suspect. I have, yes. There are over a thousand on record. Your hands were there, you could feel her, her breasts. Yeah. And then bang, over her shoulder, you see this head come up, totally kills the moment. Aye, definitely, yeah. Fantastic, okay. It was just basically a quick glimpse, really, all I got. So. What, of her breasts? Yeah. Well, I was uh, being driven down to Inverness by my... Now, this is 1952, so I would have been... I saw this huge upheaval, and this obviously must have been a monster, and it flipped round and made a huge splash. Somebody said to me, what size of body would it be? Uh, I thought it would be about the size of a minibus. Yeah. You know, big, big. Uh, maxi taxi type thing. Yeah. Yeah. C12, yeah. maybe, 14 yeah. people. That's right, that's right. And. Sliding uh, doors on the side, both sides. Sliding. Well, like, you couldn't see anything like that. But that's about the size it was, you know. Don't tell me that wasn't the Loch Ness Monster. Were you in a relationship at the time? Um, no, not at the time. Okay. Was that a problem for you that you weren't? No. Yeah, I'm just feeling a little bit of antagonism that you may be clear you should. <laughs> okay, okay. Just hold that thought. Okay. Don't go away, Nietzsche. No problem. Lee leaves the eyewitness alone to consider his account. I know you're having a few issues with it, and but listen... I can get a glass of red wine. Give me this is a tried and proven interview technique designed to test the eyewitness's memory and ability to stick to his original story. That's Steve, wasn't it? Andy. Andy, okay. We'll put you down as Andy. Right. Andy, thanks for sharing your story. I know this wasn't easy. On day eight, their luck has changed. The primary school field trip from Inverness have opted to go horse trick riding. The boat and skipper are now available. I've been sighting this over the past 46 years. Uh, I've seen things that I can't explain. It's exactly those sorts of contacts the team will be hunting. And there is no better hunter than Graham Cosby. You suggest we come out in the morning. We've come out in the morning. Uh, why is that? Because um, in the last 15 years, 50% of sightings have been made in the morning before midday. So I think, you know, that's definitely... Okay, uh, so the other 50% would be in the afternoon, more af afternoon sightings? Yeah, post. Some, sometime after, after, after lunchtime, afternoon, so... So we could have, theoretically, what you're saying, we could have actually come out in the afternoon if we wanted to. Well, we could have, but I've got something on this afternoon, so... 
Morning or afternoon, any investigation in water will be a challenge. We've actually got housing around the cameras. So this keeps the cameras uh, safe from water. Yeah. This technology has been used before, you know? It I mean, has. This is, this is industry standard stuff. Uh, this isn't cutting edge. I just hold that thought, Graham. It is when you attach this to it, though. What we're going to do now, this is just the, the um, how would you call it? Speedboat? Well, it's a Vessel. speedboat, it's... but it's not, it's, it's a speedboat, but I mean, what, 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 at this point, but what, we're going to put the camera on there, it's, it becomes the submersible mounting, Vessel. I suppose you'd call it. Vessel mount. The vessel mount. Lauren, 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 Lauren. The vessel mount launches. But early on, they begin to see signs of a potential problem. I knew we should have got the 1 16th scale. This is 1 25th. It's really starting to struggle in these choppy conditions. Oh. Oh. I'm going to try and make it back later, but give me some space. Then more drama, as either the vessel mount or the remote has run out of batteries. Now, working as a team, AJ, Lee, and George must try to retrieve the technology manually. Obviously, there won't be footage on that yet because it's just the, the um, speedboat. Well, you're not speedboat. It's just the, the aqua, aqua housing unit for the, for the camera. It has been a successful first day out on the water, and naturally, the morale is high. <laughs> Jack Cousteau says, just piss in my wetsuit. <laughs> century, the local people in the area have been a wee bit wary about the near the shore of Loch Ness because of a shushka. A Tagalog name, of course, and it means the water horse. Whether it be water horse or Loch Ness monster, to date it has been a mystery that science has been unable to explain. I've seen stuff which uh, I can't really explain. It's unexplainable. And if the Mysterious Planet team are going to explain it, they will need to find a way of effectively searching such a vast body of water. We've now made great advances in technology, but it's still very dark water and there's still a lot of it. You could put every human being on Earth into Loch Ness three times over and have some to spare. So there's room for a few mysteries. How deep is that, George? About 230 meters, okay. 2, 225. There is a lot of water in here, just to give you an idea how vast it is down there, right? You could put, say, every cat in the world, it would probably fill up about a, a fifth of it, of the lock, just to give you, a, you know, a, an idea. So that's, a, that's obviously a lot of water. Hundreds of photos of the creature have been taken in the past, the most famous proven to be a hoax. It was a fake, but it was a beautifully artistic fake. And that's why it will always be the image of the Loch Ness Monster. Lee wants to capture some footage of the creature in its natural environment below the water using their waterproof equipment. As always, Lee will insist on testing the equipment in the conditions first. Is that better? Well, what we're doing here is very important um, for our investigation. Once we get out of the loch, there's going to be no room for margin of error. And let's face it, um, Graham, the conditions out there are going to be far different than a um, you know, a two-star hotel bathroom. Believe me, you. Stand by and back up. Terry, can you turn the lights off? Boy, <laughs> that's back there. Yeah, no. yeah uh, back on. Just about got a shot of the old Persia saw there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like a no, no, seriously. So it is, it is important to get these things right. Eager to investigate the plesiosaur theory further, Lee flies to the United States to talk to world-renowned dinosaur expert Dr. Lucas. Dr. Lucas, are you dealing with dinosaurs from all the different eras? Uh, I take it there's quite a few from the, the Jurassic period, and the Jurassic obviously moved into the Cretaceous. Well, the Jurassic was before the Cretaceous, yeah, so, so you can wouldn't... begin with their origin in the Triassic. Yeah. You can track them through the Jurassic. The, your T. Rexes, your Brontosaurus. No, 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 the T. Rex is later. The Brontosaurus, you're right, is Jurassic. If you remember the movie Jurassic Park, sure. most of the dinosaurs in the park were actually the Jurassic. Sort of Cretaceous, oh, Cretaceous. and so they should, they probably should have called it Cretaceous Park. Uh, Cretaceous moving probably about 50 million years ago. A little more than that too. Cretaceous would have been about 145 to about 65 million years ago. So Triassic would have been 200, 300, 200, 250 to 200 250. million. 250. 
Okay. The Loch Ness Monster, of course, many people believe that could in fact be a plesiosaur. Well, yeah, there's sort of two speculations. It's either a plesiosaur or some sort of a whale. And my thought is I would just want to see one on a dissecting table before I really believe it even exists. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So if it's not a plesiosaur lurking beneath these peat darkened waters, what kind of creature is it? It is an amalgam of things. Okay. You know, I'm guilty of suggesting Atlantic sturgeon, yeah. for one. Now, whether you consider that a monster or not is a matter of, you know, personal persuasion. One thing that is for certain is that people are seeing something. It was very, very dark brown, black. I saw the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, OK. And tell us about the stag do the beginning, because that was a bit more interesting. You, you, you went on for a couple of days before this, wasn't it? Some people would say a lot of the monsters or the monsters are seen after a few beers. Yeah. And <laughs> oh, I would say that too. And then... Sorry. And let's talk specifics. How big was it? Lengthwise, probably about between a bus and a, and a van, large van. No, no, the stag do. How big is the stag? Oh, the bag? <laughs> right, right. Oh, jeez. The, the, the big oh, one, yeah? Numerous amounts of casualties. OK, yeah. and the... the, the, the... Only six arrests, so... OK, that's OK. But that wasn't too bad. There was only eight of us there. OK, the beast, getting back to the beast, if we could now, um, yep, yep. So I'm really trying to focus on for a moment. Lee asks the eyewitness to draw from memory exactly what he saw. Will this support the plesiosaur theory? Willie, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. On day 36 of the expedition, the submersible camera is finally attached to the aqua housing. Now, it's time to put it in the water. I'll just take you around the hotel for a sec. Basically, this has been our, our sort of a home away from home. Be here this long, you really need to sort of have a base you can kind of work with and be familiar with. And this place at the hotel, hey mate, uh, water housing. Yep. First thing, okay? No worries. Thanks, mate. Five minutes, AJ. Hey, Judy, how's it going? It's great staff here. Oh, sorry about the other night, too. I mean, it hasn't happened to me before. Thanks. Um, the staff here have been great. They look after us, and you know, you need that kind of interaction because. You know, let's face it, we get up early, work late, start in the morning, and, um, well, still plenty of time for breakfast, which is good for us. Um, any messages for me, Sarah? No messages. I didn't think there would be. Um, but, you know, it's kind of a home away from home, and, you know, when you've been on the road for, well, this street especially, it's gone about 14 and a half weeks, you kind of need that kind of security. Um, I haven't got it. But you don't have to follow me around the whole day. I was just, before I was just sort of saying, I, I just want to be a little bit more on the fly. Didn't, you don't, I don't mean you have to stick with me the whole day, you know, but... Um, you know what I mean? This investigation, though groundbreaking, is starting to take its toll on certain members of the team. I can't stand another day of this. Oh no. Things are flying far and far away. And I don't want to hear about where we should be today. Sometimes life just don't work out. You know, I'm a little bit worried about Graham. He doesn't really seem to have his mind on the job at the moment. He's certainly lacking a bit of focus. Jacinta is caring, passionate, uh, sexy. We've had some amazing sex. Uh, noisy, uh, rough sex at times. Uh, orgasms, noisy orgasms, like, you know, you wouldn't believe keeping the neighbours awake. Uh, so you're giving her orgasms? Well, she's not had any, but I've had, uh, I've had plenty. Uh, Let's be honest, cryptozoologists have, have the worst marriage records after serial killers, nymphomaniacs and alcoholics combined, so um, it's not a good record. Um, and if I could just put that in context, uh, worst of all is probably Bigfooters, followed secondly by ufologists, and then finally by submersible dinosaur enthusiasts. I can't stand another day of this. It 
With the motorized camera unit not functioning correctly, the team monitor clear images from George's complimentary house camera. Sort it out. It's very much a waiting game. It's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. Uh, we've got the gear down there. It's doing its business. It's uh, getting the vectors. But really got to get it done before the before the wind changes. And really need to. Why, what happens when the wind changes? What do you mean? Well, you said that we have to get it done before the wind changes. Right. No, no. It's just a device. It doesn't really matter at all. It's just it's a device, drama device. More drama. If I say we've got to get it done before, normally the voiceover guy would say that. But then drama. You know. But then drama. Lee catches the crew watching a low-budget porno movie on the submersible footage monitor. It's a disappointing result. Of course it's disappointing. We're supposed to be looking for a mythical sea monster, and those guys are surfing the web looking for our sex. And George was there as well. Back at the hotel, Lee attempts to get the documentary back on track. Professional, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. With the help of Colin behind the bar, I've designed an experiment. On the left, we have low alcohol beer. One beer represents one poor eyewitness account. And together, they represent many low alcohol or weak eyewitnesses accounts. They will not become one strong eyewitness account. On this side, one beer represents one strong eyewitness account or one strong piece of evidence, perhaps something forensic. So in his case, if he has many high alcohol beers, and he should be quite rat -assed. Let's see how we get on. Well, we're about quarter the way through the experiment. Here I am on low alcohol representing weak evidence, and I'm feeling pretty good. How are you, AJ? I'm feeling great. <laughs> Let's keep it going. Well, there you go. That concludes the experiment. I've been drinking low alcohol, which represents weak evidence. Accumulated, it's still weak evidence, and I'm feeling great. On the other hand, AJ's been drinking normal alcohol, which represents strong evidence. And over an accumulation of time, it gets stronger and stronger. I think I've made my point. And I've also had a chance to have a nice Merlot red wine. <laughs> the hands-on team from Mysterious Planet are in Loch Ness, dredging hot spots of the lock with a rope and hook, and they have been tracking some strange sonar readings. The radio running as well on this one here. You're running that? Good. Yeah. It's not costing us more, is it? No, no, no. Okay. I've got a funny feeling in my water that tonight might be the night. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you get that feeling, don't you? The oh, hair oh you do it now and again. Yeah, the back of your neck goes up, yeah. Neck, it's very hard to explain. Yeah. Everyone's different. A lot of people, there's a hair in the back of the neck. For me, it's Absolutely. the fine hairs just on your on your testicles yeah. there. I you start a wee bit now. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, just a little bit. You can feel it. It could be just the air pressure out here. We don't know. Yeah, but uh, it's what we call... Um, a rising, we call it, and there's times like that you got to get out in the water, you got to get out of the pub and get out there because yeah. you get that feeling in the pub, Absolutely. it doesn't mean anything, does it? But then, drama. We've hooked up something pretty big, just going to keep going up, getting rid of the slack, a bit like fishing in a way for, for tuna or marlin. You let them do the work, let the boat do the work, we're just going to keep pulling up till we can see what it is. That's the important thing, take it out of the equation. Okay, what we got? They haul it aboard. Ah, oh, shit. Sorry, guys. Just some cable. Cut it loose. Lee cuts the stray cable free, but then drama. He has cut the power to the southern and western sides of the lock. Let it rip, George! It's time for yet another approach. Yeah, that's high pitch enough. Okay. Good, thanks. Good test. What Lee's doing is feeding the cable down to the deepest part of the Loch Ness, which is 250 metres. It's a very, very deep lake. Um, and we will pick up uh, the sonar readings from the bottom, and we really hope we're going to pick up something unique. Then again, just 45 minutes into the audio investigation. Yeah, we've got to keep it. Okay. 
An exciting breakthrough. AJ had a good sound reading, which seems to be equating with something we're picking up here as well, George. Yeah, they would see about 160 meters down. So what the, the process now would be, George, of course, is to we'll download that onto a, a disc. Uh, we'll send it electronically um, to the BFU SIDIR. And what's that? Oh, it's the Bigfoot UFO and Submersible Dinosaur Institute, which we do a lot of our stuff with. There, the sounds will be analyzed and broken into their separate frequencies. Until then, it's a waiting game. She means a lot to me. She, you know, this is my third marriage in 14 years. Graham, I'm going to stop you there. Who is Graham? What's your name? What's your name? Rosby. No, no, the other one. What's your, what's the, your, your first name? Graham. You're Graham. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're Graham. He's in here, isn't he? That's where Graham is. He's not out here. Graham's in there. You're Graham. You're Graham. She's not Graham. Okay? You've got to look after Graham. So you need some confidence, honesty. Honesty to Graham. You've got to confide. And you've got to confront her. So I should throw her back? No, I wouldn't. The sound analysis is in. The sound files have been separated with any interferences isolated. Immediately, the team detect an audio anomaly. I'm with Brian now, so get your arse round here and get your dinosaur crap out of my house. Get a life, you loser. The analysis was so thorough, it has been able to isolate a mobile phone call from Graham's third wife, Jacinda, on a different frequency. Jacinta has finally left Graham for a furniture upholsterer called Brian. It's not the result the team wanted, and so far their investigation has done little more than pour scotch whiskey on the already heated fires of the bait. What did I see? Tell me. Well, I've been here 20 years and I don't have an answer. Well, our journey's come to an end. We've been at Loch Ness for two and a half months now, investigating the phenomenon of the Loch Ness Monster. We've talked to eyewitnesses, the experts, and thrown an unprecedented amount of scientific hardware at the mystery. It's been an emotional journey. But what do I believe? You Since this heart! He's crazy! Huh? Just a two-day trip! He's see? Hey, AJ! Fire it up! She's with Brian though! She's with Brian! He told me not to fire! Get a lock, Graham! Get a lock! You told me not to fall off! You told me! It was only a two-day trip! Graham Cosby has clearly had a nervous breakdown, and Lee is tired of the investigation and eager to get to Roswell. The mystery of Loch Ness remains unsolved for now.